Okay. Uh, so this is my third year coming back here, uh, and I absolutely love joining you guys for, uh, for this meeting. Um, you know, I can, I can never say no to any bagels and locks. That's my favorite. So, so they always make me a nice parting gift, so I can, I'll be here every year guaranteed, I assure you. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to you know, talk to you guys about what we're doing down in Miami uh, and the importance of our brain tumor uh, center, which we're building. Uh, and what I really want everyone in this room to understand is, is, that, it's, it, is that it really requires an entire team. Uh, and the fact that we can't do it without people like yourselves uh, helping us and really pushing us ahead. Uh, when you're talking about major, major brain tumor centers like Sloan Kettering, which is where I trained and also where um, Dr. De La Fuente trained, uh, we've seen how to build uh, a major brain tumor center. Uh, and we've seen how it benefits patients, how it benefits the entire community. Uh, and what's important for you guys to understand is that you guys need to be invested, you guys need to be involved, because it can't be done without you guys. Um, I think that the doctors are just one piece, uh, but the support that comes from the patients and everyone in the community uh, is absolutely vital. Uh, and to understand kind of what that does for the patients who have this disease. Um, you know, some of the stuff that you heard about what we're doing in terms of our vaccine trial, uh, and our laser therapy and all the different novel uh, techniques that we have. You know, I think the goal is that you really want to push the field forward. I think when you're talking about people who have brain tumors, just the conventional treatments uh, many times does not work. And so these patients tend to go to places that offer the most novel techniques. So, so Duke and Johns Hopkins and Sloan Kettering and UCSF, these are all excellent centers uh, that have pushed the field forward. Uh, but we've done the same down in Miami, and I think we can build something just as big, if not better. Um, and, and all the stuff that we're offering, uh, it's really critical to get everyone behind that initiative. Uh, and you guys have been great, and, and, and all my patients, you know, most of my patients actually come from this area. Um, I'd say probably about 80% come from Boca and Palm Beach in this area. Um, and, and the ability of those patients to kind of spread the word and, and also have future patients you know, benefit from what we're doing um, is absolutely critical. And so I want you guys to recognize the role you play uh, when it comes to building our, our brain tumor center. Um, we really need to have, uh, have everyone behind us. Uh, and that doesn't you know, mean financial, it just means that people need to understand where the best healthcare is, where these patients will benefit the most, uh, and really spread the word and understand what we're building down there. Um, and I'll just go over just a couple of things which I think are most kind of noteworthy. Um, as you heard, we have uh, a, a trial. So we have a trial looking at the most uh, malignant forms of brain tumors, uh, glioblastoma, which was very well pronounced. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, um, but the point is, that the conventional therapies for these tumors really don't work very well. So even after a maximal surgery and the most aggressive treatments, you know, these patients typically have one to two years. Uh, and that's really allowed us to push the field forward and look for alternative uh, therapies. And this is one of the more promising uh, uh, avenues. And what we basically do is when we take the tumor out of the patient, we then harvest certain proteins from that patient's tumor uh, and we form a basically highly concentrated vaccine, which then gets given back to the patient as a simple flu shot, with the goal of really sparking that patient's immune system to fight the tumor as if it was the common cold. Uh, and we've had some good results. It's certainly not a cure, it's certainly not the final answer, but it's a move towards the right direction. Uh, and this is just one of the things that we're doing down there, as opposed to simply conventional radiation and, and, and chemotherapy, we also like to add in these, these trials, which give the patient more hope. Uh, so that's just one of the novel things that we're doing down there. Uh, other things that we're doing in terms of um, uh, laser ablation, this is a, this is a uh, new technique that was invented over the last maybe three or four years. Uh, and instead of a large craniotomy, which, which is the way that we handle most tumors, uh, there's a new technique for treating different types of tumors, which may be smaller, which may be deeper in the brain, uh, where you can't always access those tumors. Uh, and what we do is we, we basically stick a small catheter that's about three millimeters uh, deep into the brain, so there's no, you know, there's no craniotomy, there's no large incision. It's just a simple three millimeter hole, and we place the laser catheter into the tumor, and then we can cook the tumor from the inside out. 
Uh, it's something which takes you know only about an hour or two. Uh, we've had great success so far. Uh, we've done about 40 patients with this technique and 39 left within a day. And another patient just wanted to stay an extra day. I guess the food was good in the hospital. But, um, but we've had great success with that. Um, and, and those are just some examples about, about kind of how we're moving the field forward. And you can't be complacent. I think that's another key point. I think there's a lot of good treatments when it comes to, to, to you know, taking care of these patients. But if you get stuck in that rut of, of kind of this is good enough, then you become complacent and you're not pushing the field forward. Uh, and so we're always looking to make things better. So, so the term that it's good enough doesn't really exist to me. Uh, I think we have excellent treatments, but it's never good enough. Um, and you can always improve on what you have. And I think that's a very, very key, uh, you know, key concept to have when you're treating such a difficult disease. Well, actually, you know what, I'll talk about one more. Uh, which, uh, which we started using over the last couple months, uh, and that's using uh, sodium fluorescein when you're taking uh, certain tumors out of the brain. Um, so anyone who's done brain surgery would, would, would know that the key is you gotta take out the tumor and you have to leave all the healthy tissue behind. Uh, and there are certain situations where that, where that divide, where that plane is actually very, very obvious. And then there's other situations where you can't really tell where the tumor ends and where the brain starts. Uh, and so that can be very difficult because either you take out too much and you can hurt the patient uh, or you don't take out enough uh, and you leave some tumor behind. Uh, and so that's a very, very difficult concept. Uh, and so one of the new techniques which we've developed is you give sodium fluorescein, which is a dye. Uh, it's given just through the veins, uh, you know, probably about an hour before surgery. Uh, and then during surgery, um, that dye leaks into the tumor but not into the normal tissue. Uh, and so when you're operating under the microscope, the actual tumor glows and it lights up uh, and the regular brain does not. And so, you know, this is not the answer again, but it's another tool, it's another piece of equipment that you have as a neurosurgeon when you're dealing with these difficult cases and it really maximizes how much tumor you can take out safely and then, and then leave all the, all the rest of the tissue behind. And we usually use this, you know, in, 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 in uh, combination uh, with the awake craniotomy. Uh, which we've been doing, uh, you know, since I got down there. Uh, and that concept I think most of you, you know, know about. It's essentially doing the surgery with the patient awake, uh, such that you can monitor all of their functions, speech, movement, uh, and that way there's a, there's a much lower chance of you causing any type of permanent damage. So there's, there certainly have been several patients who I've seen who, who have been treated, you know, locally at, at a, at a at, you know, smaller hospital, uh, and they have just a biopsy done because, because of the experience of the hospital or the, or the, or the, or the comfort of the surgeon. Uh, and that's, they can always have a, a you know, more, uh, like more um, um, extensive resection if the right techniques are used. Uh, and so there, there are definitely situations where people get operated on locally and there's still a lot of tumor left uh, that I've seen and we usually do those surgeries with the patient awake. Uh, we use the sodium fluorescein uh, and that gives the patient hope. Uh, and that's, and that's, the, that's the key goal here, is that the, when the patients come down to our brain tumor center, they have to understand that they're gonna get the absolute best care possible in the country, uh, and we always maintain hope, because without hope, uh, there's no point to operating, there's no point to giving therapy. As, you know, the, so each patient needs to feel like they're invested in their own treatment, and that they can beat this condition. Uh, and that's an attitude that we always foster down in Miami, and it's, it's, a, it's a critical piece of the puzzle.